Hello, in this video we are going to talk about it's a common pain reliever safe during pregnancy. This is based on an article published in JAMA 2024. If you are pregnant or planning to be, you have probably heard about the importance of managing pain and fever carefully. For decades, astaminophen, also known as paracetamol, and sold under brand name like Tylenol has been considered one of the safest options for this during pregnancy. Major health authorities like the US Food and Drug Administration, FDA, have long stated it poses minimal risk. However, in recent years, some scientific studies have raised concerns. These studies suggested a possible link between using astaminophen during pregnancy and a slightly higher chance of the child developing certain neurodevelopmental conditions such as autism spectrum disorder, otherwise called ASD, and attention deficit hyperactive disorder, otherwise called ADHD. In 2021, a group of international scientists even recommended that pregnant people avoid astaminophen unless it is medically necessary. This created confusion and anxiety for many expectant parents. Why the conflicting advice? This document and video explains the finding of a very large new study that aimed to answer this question more definitively. Why were the earlier studies possibly misleading? The scientists identified several reasons why the initial studies might have shown a connection that wasn't actually a direct cause and effect relationship. This is often due to something called confounding factors, meaning hidden variables that can make two things look related when they are not. Think of it this way. Imagine you notice that people who carry lighters are more likely to get lung cancer. It, it would be wrong to conclude that the lighter causes cancer. The real link is that many people who carry lighters also smoke cigarettes. The smoking is the confounding factor. In the case of acetaminophen, the potential confounding factors include 1. The reason for the medication. The people take acetaminophen for specific reasons such as infections or high fevers, severe pain like migraines or chronic pain conditions, autoimmune diseases. Some of these underlying health issues themselves might slightly influence a fetal brain development. So if a study finds a higher rate of ADHD in children whose mothers took Astaminophen, it might actually be due to the fever or infection the medication was treating, not the medication itself. The second, family genetics and health. Conditions like autism or ADHD can run in families. The new study found that the pregnant people who used astaminophen were also more likely to have health conditions, including. ADHD or autism traits themselves that are genetically linked to neurodevelopmental disorders. The family's genetics could be the real common factor, not the acetaminophen. Third, use of other medications. People managing significant health issues during pregnancy might take multiple medications. It could be another medication or the combination of medications that is related to the outcomes rather than astaminophen specifically. Because of these potential mix-ups, researchers knew a more rigorous study was needed. How this new study was different. To address the limitations of past research, a major study was conducted in Sweden using a data from nearly 2.5 million children born between 1995 and 2019. This study had key strengths. Number one, massive size. It was one of the largest studies ever conducted on this topic. Second, accurate records. It used official medical and prescription records, which are more reliable than asking people to remember what they took years later. Third, 
clinical diagnosis. It tracked children who received official diagnosis of autism, ADHD, or intellectual disability from doctors rather than just relying on parent-reported symptoms. Fourth, the sibling comparison, the most important part. This was the study's most powerful tool. Researchers compared siblings within the same family where the mother used a stamina during one pregnancy but not during another. Why is comparing siblings so important? Siblings share a lot of things that are hard to measure. About half of their DNA, their home environment, their general family health history, and socioeconomic factors. But comparing siblings, the study could effectively cancel out these shared background factors. If astaminophen were the true cause, you would expect the sibling who was exposed to it in the womb to have higher risk than their non-exposed brother or sister. What the study found? Number one, the initial misleading pattern. When researchers looked at the entire population without using sibling comparison, they did see a very small increased risk. Children exposed to astaminophen were about 5-7% to 7 more likely to be diagnosed with autism or ADHD. However, the actual difference in risk was tiny. For autism, it meant a 0.09% increase in absolute risk by age 10. The researchers also noted this small link could easily be explained by unmeasured confounding factors. The key findings from sibling analysis when the researchers compared the siblings within the same family, the association between acetaminophen and neurodevelopment disorders completely disappeared. For autism, there was no increased risk. For ADHD, there was no increased risk. For intellectual disability, there was no increased risk. The study also looked at whether higher doses of acetaminophen based on prescription records made a difference. Again, after accounting for family factors using sibling comparison, no dose response relationship was found. Higher doses were not linked to higher risk. So what does this mean? The most reliable finding from this large careful study is that the previously observed link between acetaminophen and neurodevelopment disorders is likely not a direct cause and effect relationship. Instead, it seems to be explained by other factors like the underlying health of the parent, the reason for taking the medication such as infection, chronic pain, and family genetics. In simple terms, the study suggests that stamaphin use during pregnancy does not appear to cause autism, ADHD, or intellectual disability in children. Important considerations and limitations. While the study is very reassuring, it's important to understand its limits. It doesn't prove absolute harmlessness. No sing single study can ever prove something is 100% safe under all circumstances. This study strongly suggests that major neurodevelopment risks are unlikely, but it cannot rule out every possible effect. Second, follow medical advice. This study supports the current guideline from health authorities like the FDA. You should always consult your doctor or midwife before taking any medication during pregnancy. Third, use the lowest effective dose. The general principle for any medication during pregnancy is to use it when needed, but to use the lowest effective dose for the shortest amount of time necessary to manage your symptoms. Do not suffer needlessly from pain or fever as this can also be stressful for you and the key takeaways for expectant parents. This large high quality study provides significant reassurance that using astaminophen during pregnancy is not a direct cause of autism or ADHD in children. The health issues that lead someone to need astaminophen like fevers, infection, or chronic pain may be the real factors influencing child development, not the medication itself. Always talk to your healthcare provider about managing pain and fever during pregnancy. When medication is needed, 
Astaminophen remains a primary option based on current evidence. Use it wisely, only when necessary and at the recommended dose. Thank you for watching. Please share this video with others. Finally, a disclaimer. This summary is for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. Always consult your doctor or other healthcare provider for any personal health concerns or decisions about medication use during pregnancy. See you in next video. Thank you.